All right, guys, GoToBoy32 here checking out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack getting ready to start working on this next build. Now, originally I thought about calling it the TAC Ultra, Ultra TAC, and I just remembered that Microtech has a beautiful little knife here. I think they call this the Ultra TAC. So we're going to call this thing the TAC Ultra, T-A-C dash Ultra. And I think that might have been what I wanted to name it anyway, but look at that little jewel right there. It's got a little KB32 on it. That was a gift from Ray, our X-Ring, and Corey over there at Microtech, and I really appreciate it. This is one of my daily carries. I love this knife. All right, so let's talk about this thing, the uh, Tech Ultra. What's the purpose of this thing? I want to end the, the always, the, the uh, never-ending endeavor to try to create the, in, in my mind, what I think would be the most ultimate tactical firearm uh, in 5.56, of course. So, what do we start off with? Well, last week or two, I did a review on this guy right here. This is the LWRC Compact uh, compact Stock Kit. <laughs> yeah, and it has a flat wire spring. It has a little itty bitty buffer, as you can see right there. Look at that little thing. And it has a shortened uh, buffer tube as well. Hold on. Look at that little buffer tube, as well as that little tiny itty bitty stock. Now, there are a lot of people who like this, and some people, they don't like this. But I, my mission here is to have something really, really cool. And I think the original desire was to put this on the uh, Law Tactical Folder, but we found out the rip brace from CMMG has a set screw that limits the travel of your stock. Hence, the uh, length of pull is taken care of and mitigated by that little deal right there. All right, so what do we got here? In this video, uh, we'll be doing a review on the BCM bolt carrier group here in the near future. That's going to go in here. And then uh, charging handles. In this particular rifle, I want to go ahead and do the Radiant Raptor. I think in my mind, it's probably one of the best ones out there. Somebody asked me a while ago if I'd ever tried the Aero Precision. There it is. I usually run this in my competition rifles because I do like that extra large ability to rack and slide. But as of late, I started working with these guys right here. This is the... Uh, Rainier Arms. This is their new little deal, and I'll be doing a full-blown review on this guy coming up. Okay, so let's talk about this. What are we doing? We're taking a look at this guy right here. This is the upper receiver set with the Geisley handguard. This is their Mark 14. I always get them mixed up, the Mark 14. And I just got my first really nice scratch across the top of it. It is a really, really nice upper receiver set. Uh, it does not come with the bolt carrier group or the charging handle. And I'm kind of glad because this uh, receiver, this thing right here, I think it retailed for like $4.99 a couple months ago. And now it's about $5.99, uh, whatever the market bears. And unfortunately, the market, it is a seller's market right now because everybody wants to buy, which kind of drives the pricing up. I've heard a lot of people, it's before we always get into this thing, a lot of people like, screw PSA, they raised their prices. Uh, yeah, they did. And guess what? So did everybody else. But what I have found is that ammunition pricing is starting to come back down. So if you guys are looking to buy ammo, I would say hold off probably another month. We're going to see that stuff drop back to where it was before the, the scare was over. Well, now, unless you got the riots and everybody else wants to go out and buy a firearm. So anyway, kudos to the people who want to go out and buy stuff. So uh, let's talk about this for a little bit further. We've got a mil spec upper receiver. Uh, we've got a mil spec dust cover for assist, which I really like. I'm a big fan of just mil spec stuff. Uh, the alignment is absolutely perfect across the top of it. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this guy apart. Uh, well, I'm just gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the handguard off because I've got a Mark 8 right here, and it's going to be interesting to see if they use, and I'm pretty sure they do, the same barrel nut. Uh, this is a 16-inch FN barrel. If you want to see it scoped, we did a video the other day. Uh, at the very beginning, this is the first thing that we scoped out. Capped off with an A2 birdcage. Now, I will be trading this thing out because I am a huge fan with, hold on, this guy right here, the Yankee Hill Machine. This is their Phantom uh, Flash Hider. This thing is awesome. It's just a little bit longer uh, than the A2, probably about a half inch, maybe even a three quarters of an inch, five eighths. But this is by far one of my favorites for the money, $18, $29, depending on where you get them from. If I find them on sale, I just buy them at least two or three at a time. Save on shipping if you do that. All right, FM barrel, one and seven twists. It does come with the Geisley pinned uh, 
gas block. This is a mid-length gas system. No carbine here. I like mid-length on a, on a carbine barrel, 16 inch. You still maintain that reliability and yet it is a little bit softer on the shooting. So uh, it's one of those things that I absolutely like. Now, one of the things that I was telling some people a while back is that the alignment from here to here in my mind has to be perfect. Uh, I've had several other manufacturers that will send me a rifle out and the first thing I do is I will take a look and I will eyeball it. Now if you have a countertop at home, this is a countertop right here, I can put this right here and there is no space between the front and the back right here is what you want. And I've seen it as bad as an eighth of an inch and what that is and I am now experiencing that lift that's where the handguard is lifting up like this. The more you tighten it, I am experiencing that with the uh, UTG Pro handguard. After I took it out and shot it, the damn thing started rising up. Same thing happened with my Midwest Industries, <coughs> which is why I don't particularly care for that thing anymore. Another reason I like the Geisley is they have this big old two inch barrel nut. Now, I will tell you this, in looking in here, the Feed ramps are perfect, absolutely perfect. And I'll show you a photo right here. They are perfectly aligned. This barrel was tested, I can tell you that. Another cool thing that I like about the Geisley handguard is it does give you the torque specifications for the tightening screws right here. And when we put this thing back on, I'm going to utilize this guy right here. This is the Borka Tools. This is a precision torque limiter. It's for meant for 100 pounds. Now these screws are meant for, uh, no, this is 100 inch pounds. These screws are eight pounds, which equates to 96 inch pounds. So we're about four inches aggressive with the, four inch pounds aggressive with this guy, which I don't mind. Another thing I do like about the Geisley handguard, this one, is it has these tensioning screws on either side here and here. And one of the reasons that they have those is to keep your handguard in alignment with this top pick rail. Love that stuff. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and tear this thing down. I want to take the Mark 8 handguard, which is more like a quad rail with M-lock uh, slots on it, and see if it'll slide right over top of this thing. Uh, I have thought about turning this into a uh, competition with the slim line handguard don't know yet. We're running those multi-gun nationals next week or in a week and a half. Actually, yeah. Uh, and I'm using the JP handguard on that rifle setup. But this is really cool. So let's go ahead and tear this thing apart real quick. And I'm trying a new thing when I do product reviews is we're going to do it from this angle here so that you guys can see me. And I'll use some pictures to show you some of the details. I might even in the future mount a camera from the top so that you can see that. All right, now you've got these two cross-sectional bolts right here. And what those do, those cross over. Now, if you notice, there is a tightening um, unified nut system right here. Yeah, I said unified nut. Anyway, it's here and here. And what that does is it applies interior pressure to the barrel nut in there, which is a system that I absolutely love. A lot of times when you do have those open slots right here on the bottom of your handguard, that's what shrinks up and that's what creates that rise in the handguard. Hate that stuff. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the two side tensioning screws. I've had some other people, this is very similar to the handguard that we had with the Strike Industries and I had some folks, they were like, I'm not putting that on there because it's going to scar my upper. Well. I'm not too concerned about two little screw notches on the side of it, but it comes off just like that. Now, let me tell you something a little bit unique about the Geisley handguard. The barrel nuts, they are proprietary and you will have to get yourself one of these guys right here. This is their barrel wrench. And what that does is it will fit a little, it has a little hole right there on either side and you can just stick it in there and that's how you torque your barrel nut. I'm not gonna check the uh, tension on this thing uh, on screen. I'll go ahead and do it afterwards, but I, anytime that I get an upper receiver, including barrel, handguard, uh, and uh, receiver, I always take it all the way down and I check 
for the proper torque specifications on anything. 37 pounds is the minimum on this guy right here, as far as I'm concerned. I've known people who tighten them up to 100 pounds. I just don't see the reason to do that, but okay. But here's the deal. Always check. And I've had people go, well, I took my gun the first time to the hand, you know, to the range and the handguard came loose. That's why. Don't ever trust anyone else to build your gun. And I always stress to everybody, please, please, please go ahead and check your specifications. Okay, so what we're going to do here, this handguard, God, I wish I'd uh, brought my damn uh, scales out here, but this is like 12.4 ounces, not that big a deal. Uh, let's take a look at the Mark 8 handguard. Now, I bought this one off of Big Daddy Unlimited a while back. As you can see, the differences in the profile between these two. So I'm trying to put them up and show them in the light so you can see. This is a little bit wider. It does have the M locks in a more of a quad rail section piece. So you could take your uh, pick rails and put them over here. Also, really nice is like an Arasaka uh, light holder with its 45 degrees. This is nice so you can put your pick rails actually in this section right here. I don't know if you could actually use them if you put them in there, but you can. I'm a big fan of the M-Lock, what can I say? But you've got an M-Lock here and on the side, this is kind of a porting or venting and an M-Lock's on the bottom. Basically, you're not gaining a whole lot except on this one, you're actually getting some M-Lock stuff on the, in the corners right here. So the big thing, let's see here real quickly. Let's put this stuff away. We'll go ahead and loosen these guys up and be right back. The big thing is, is do we have matching barrel nuts? I know a lot of people out there probably already have these things, but wouldn't it be cool? Uh, and you'd probably know the answer to this, don't you? Don't you? Now, I love these ratchets because they have a little thumb turn right here that you can use it. All right, let's put that in there. Now, the only thing that I am finding on this handguard is that the tooling, it, it's grooved. Let me know if you guys have the Mark 8 handguard, if your tooling right there is grooved because this one's smooth as a baby's ass. All right, let's go ahead and pull that out. And no, we do not have a matching. So there you go. You've got a screw hole here. And now I can see what's going on. Uh, this screw hole here is higher, right here, Let's see, put the, there you go. This screw hole is higher than this one, which drops it down. You can use a single screw. Now you probably could use uh, this barrel nut on the Mark 14, but you're not going to be able to use but maybe one screw on your Mark 8. Yep, this rear hole is uh, not going to be able to be used. And I wouldn't want to put this on this rifle with that. But look at that. That's a nice looking handguard. That's a nice looking handguard. It really is. All right, well, that answers that question. So I just thought that would be an interesting touch. But let's take a look at that heavy profile barrel all the way across. FN, beautiful interior. It's chrome lined. Um, what I'll do, guys, is I'll put a link on my website, kb32tac.com, so you can see what all this stuff entails. But again, what we're going to do is we're going to change out the muzzle brake. We're going with a mid-length gas system. You've got the barrel nut that you can't use with the Mark 8. <laughs> and we're BCM with a Radiant Raptor on the charging handle. Let's take this thing out to the uh, range and see how accurate it is this week. And uh, that's it. Guys, that's it. Uh, the Palmetto State Armory. This is their upper. I think these things right now are about $5.99, but I do know this. You cannot buy an upper receiver, an FN barrel, a barrel nut, gas uh, tube, and a handguard that you can from PSA for this dollar amount. Does that make sense? That being said, God bless America. God bless those men and women in uniform who fight for our constitutional rights on a 24-7 basis, because freedom is not free. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Uh, uh, what we're going to do next, guys, is I'm going to take and put this thing together. And uh, over on GunStreamer, we'll show you the assembly video. 
I uh, had one video that was up and uh, the guys over there at YouTube removed the video so you can't figure out how to assemble a lawful firearm. Y'all take care. I'm out of here.